Hello there everyone, Ash and Flash here and welcome on into a early LEGO DC 2024 set review. Today we are looking at the brand new and first ever Batman the Animated Series set. This is set number 76271, has 4,210 pieces and is retailing for $299.99 USD or $379.99 Canadian. It will be available beginning on April the 1st for Insiders members. So unfortunately, the box has come damaged. It's actually a little bit wet and damp still. Um, so yeah, it's completely damaged down here on the side. And uh, some of the tabs have even come loose here as well. And usually I, I don't care about that sort of thing. But when it's a really important and favorite set, which I have no doubt that this is probably in my top five without even building it yet. Um, this is a little sad. I would have really liked to keep it or at least in good condition. So that that's a bit of a shame. Not Lego's fault. We'll blame it on DHL. And here is the back of the box showing off uh, a couple of different things, a different angle, removing different parts of the set, as well as we've got uh, just showing off the dimensions, a little bat cave play feature, and how you can display the set. So here it is all built. And I think I genuinely struggle with finding the words to fully express what this set means to me. I look at this set and I have so many emotions running through me at once as uh, someone who grew up loving Lego, obviously, number one. And then in 2006, I got my first Batman set, which introduced me to Batman and DC and different things like that. And then it was through Batman, the animated series, that I learned and fell in love with a bunch of other really awesome characters. And this set is, to put it simply, it's made for me. It is made for someone like me who loves Lego, who loves Batman, who loves Batman the Animated Series, and who loves art. Like, this is a piece of art. I really don't think that you can look at this and go, eh, it doesn't, it's not art. It doesn't look like it. Like, it genuinely, the obviously capturing the Art Deco style from Batman the Animated Series, of course, as well with the skyline, but then even just how these buildings are created, every single one of them unique, and the, the part usage and the colors in this, it's just incredible. And speaking of the background, this is not something that I think that I shared before, but back in high school, I actually created this piece of art. And basically, it's pointillism, just all little dots bah, 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 with a marker, all to create this background here of Arkham Asylum. So the fact that this is actually included in here with obviously the sky color and then Arkham Asylum itself, that's what I mean by this set is truly made for me. You also need to understand the journey that you go on when building this set. It has 44 bags. You might notice here that a lot of them are different sizes. There's some small ones, some large ones, and we'll come back to that in a second. There's also a total of 61 stickers here, at least 61 numbered stickers. There's some that you obviously repeat a couple times, which means that there's more than 61. Next, let's look at the instructions. Very important. You see this. We've got the cool artwork here on the front, number one on the top, and then on the back, the bat signal. And then looking in the inside, you can see that we've got this little blurb. If you want to pause and read about Gotham, a bunch of artwork and reference images. You've got this product shot. Then here we have the set designer hanging up the set. A little, uh, little blurb about the set as well. You can see in the back a little bit and how you can prop it open and then this is a little bit here from the design team a picture of the two of them so this here is joel baker he's the set designer love the outfit by the way not just because it's a leather jacket but because it is a brown jacket with a yellow shirt and a black tie referencing bruce wayne's outfit which i think is a really fun little nod there and then you've got mark trenter and he is actually the graphic designer for the set who's done Avengers Tower and different things in the past. And speaking of the graphic design, you could see a couple of the references that we're going to go through here in the set. But speaking of references, this is probably the craziest thing that I think any Lego set has ever done. Every single bag, when you open it, has an episode title. So for this one, it's The Strange Secret of Bruce Wayne. If I just flip through here just to show you, Let's see what happens when we come across the next bag. Right, here we go. Bag four, episode, Shadow of the Bat. So every single time that you open a brand new bag here, no matter the number, all 44 of them have a specific reference to them. Episode, 
blind as a bat. And what is the reference? Well, if I come on over here to number two, you could see here as you flip through again, what's that up at the top? The clock king. This one's probably the most obvious. Bag 29. Well, what, what exactly are we building? Well, you go through and you are building the clock when it is referencing the clock king. Sometimes it can be as simple as just referencing one of the little tile characters. Sometimes it's just a specific building in the background that happens to appear once that they're like, wow, that's a really cool design of like the building. Let's put that in the set. Other times it's obviously that's when the minifigure is here. So it, it's a number of different things. It is really, really something else. Uh, we're going to really be focusing more on that in my Easter egg and reference breakdown video just because some of the buildings in the background, they're not like something specific. It just looks cool. And I think they, they picked it because of that. But anyways, just keep that in mind. I will mention a couple of times throughout this video, just, hey, this is this building. This is from this episode. So if you are interested in hopping around to the different buildings, there are the time codes and chapters down below. So we're gonna go in order of how you build it. So starting things off over here with Wayne Manor, uh, this looks great. And there is a, a couple of different buildings down below in the foreground that I wanna show you. One thing on the side first, I've been dying to talk about this, this little sticker here. This sign is from the intro of uh, Laughing Fish, which is just an amazing Joker episode. And here you've got uh, the road leading up to Wayne Manor, which I think looks really great. And you've got a little bit of a fountain, this small little building there, and some shrubbery and different things there. Looks great. I love the design, the points and all that. And just how you've got a little bit of like the moon in the back with the clouds. Looks really awesome and all the different towers to Wayne Manor. But there's a really dark reference here, I believe, and that is these two pieces. I believe those are meant to be the gravestones for Thomas and Martha Wayne. How do I know that? The designer commented on brick sets saying that there's actually 30 characters referenced here. Some of them are referenced via uh, just pieces. So I think Thomas and Martha Wayne. Wow. Now, Wayne Manor is actually removable. You can remove this entire bit there. And it opens on up, revealing here none other than Alfred. And he's got a little cup of tea, I assume, and like a chimney or, or, or a fireplace in the back. And you've got a double door. And then as well, the grandfather clock, the clock leading down to the Batcave, which how do you get to the Batcave? Coming back here, we've got, of course, the stacked deck and you've got a sticker there as well as a little door, some windows and everything. And then you've also got the wild deuces, the two-face hideout, which looks great with the double doors there. Again, some windows and lights that you're going to see that technique all throughout the set but you are able to actually remove this entire front part revealing the bat cave and here we've got like a shadow box version of the bat cave which is just amazing i love the symbol and how they've done that for the cave the whole thing like that's amazing i really wish last year's shadow box was this instead uh but i really love the colors and everything that they've got going on here the reddish brown for like the ground and even just in the back there how you could see the sort of elevator shaft coming on down now this is the batmobile and you're actually able to detach it and remove it and this looks really cool i assume that this might be an indication of what the batmobile might be looking like in the rumored set in the summer we'll have to wait and see i think that's a really cool color choice and you can see the rest here you've got a little sticker there for the bat computer you've got a sticker over here of robin and batgirl running towards the uh, batmobile and removing a couple of the pieces just to show you you've also got the giant penny from almost got him which is just such a cool reference and i've been dying to have an actual penny inside of a large bat cave believe it or not we're not done though with the bat cave because there's a really cool play feature here where the bridge actually can be lowered down now can the batmobile actually squeeze through no it cannot it can drive like this i guess but uh no unfortunately it can't fit through but still the fact that they included that and that is not in any pictures or videos so far until the review right now so really cool to show that off over here, we've got a little reference to Polly's. Now, this is actually stationary. This does not detach. There's nothing to remove. But uh, yeah, that is a location from the show. 
Also, there's a sticker here on the side of this piece that says pool. And then coming across over here to the Gotham City Courthouse. This is really cool that they reference this. I love the little frogs for the lions. That's great. The stairs as well going on up. I love all four of the doors, the columns and all that. And then up above, you've got the scales. Look great. And you've even got a little statue up at the top. So that's really awesome. Now, again, nothing here to remove or detach. This is stationary. Here's a pretty fun section here referencing the Riddler and you of course just detach this whole bit here off the top and you can see you've got this brick built question mark. Let's zoom in shall we? I love the shaping of that and how they've accomplished that but up above love that little Riddler. So this sign here up at the top, this is the Pussykins Cat Food Factory, again from Almost Got em, and you're actually able to detach it and remove it with that statue from the courthouse. And you could see cat woman there. And I think that's like the conveyor belt and a bunch of cat food and also Isis. So I don't think that counts as one of the other characters referenced here. In behind all this, you've got just other buildings. And I just love the designs for like the windows and everything, the techniques that are being used. But this building for the Galaxy Broadcasting is really cool. I love the shaping of that, even the details there up there at the top. But if you remove this bit here at the top, this whole chunk comes off, giving you access to Clayface. And he's got a bunch of different computer screens and everything there on the sides. I guess that's meant to be like when Batman is projecting all of the different performances of Matt Hagen. So that's really cool. Also, the design is very similar to the 2008 version from the Lego Batman video game that we've been waiting to get ever since then. Not quite done with Clayface though, because this bit also is detachable and that allows you to gain access so that you could put uh, the screw through and hang it from this side. So if you measure like from this point to where we're gonna go on the other side and then you just uh, attach it onto the screw and you can go ahead and put this back. And this is just a really cool looking building design. It's nothing specific, but uh, it looks great. Coming on over here to the ground floor of Goth Corp. This looks great. I love that two by three sticker there with the logo. And then this is really cool. That is a bunch of ice actually freezing up for on Goth Corp. Of course, because that's where Mr. Freeze is. So you've got another really cool logo on that Mario tile piece. But to gain access to the inside, you just remove this bit here. I love the icicles on the roof there, it looks great. You've got Summer Gleason uh, recording there, I guess the uh, event, which looks great, the humanitarian event. And then also you've got Mr. Freeze, which looks amazing, who's rumored to be appearing in a summer set. And then these two pieces, I believe is our third brick built character. I believe this is meant to represent Nora here. Could be wrong about that, but that is just such a specific inclusion. And again, there is one other person that's not represented by stickers and different things. So here we go. I'm pretty sure that's who it is. This is the Gotham City Opera. Looks really great. I love just this design here, the poster out at the top, and then also the Gotham Opera coming soon. Little symbol looks great. And you can, of course, remove the whole thing. You've got the double doors, love the tall windows and everything. And then on the inside, you've got the penguin there on stage with his umbrella. I really like this design here for the building. I have actually figured out which one this is from. This is from when Dick gets scared and has the fear toxin in him. Um, so this looks really cool. Again, we're going to go references and all that. Don't worry. I'll let you know where it's specifically from. But I love the window design. And again, those four statues. And this is so, so cool. This is Batman on top of the skyscraper from the intro. Looks just so cool. I love that a lot. And uh, just the design of the building and the print is amazing. I also really like the small little blimp there in the back. Got a couple of these in the set. And here is the GCPD, the police station. I really love this building. I think it looks great with all the windows and everything. And just the shaping of this, like that looks so, so cool. And also up at the very top here, you do have the bat signal on the roof. And if you follow the angle that the bat signal is pointing, you could see in the back that the light is shining through there. That is so cool how they've done that effect. And that's a really incredible printed piece there. Love how that looks. Maybe could have been dark yellow to match the actual light color. And just to show you a little bit of the ground floor, you do have some stairs actually going up to the doors. And you've got this sticker here on the front that says police. And you get access to the interior by grabbing onto the top part here, removing it, and look at that. 
You've got so much going on in here. So over here, you've got uh, Renee Montoya over at her desk, and you've got a, a door in behind. She's got G. It says CPD on each of the three stickers. is really cool. You've got Detective Harvey Bullock there, which looks great. He's got a little mug. Should have had a donut, I think. But over here, we've got Jim Gordon's office, which looks great. He's on the phone. I love the hair that he's got there. But one of the coolest little details is the propeller there piece being used for the fan in his office. A little oversized, but just the fact that they included that brick built is so awesome. Here is the Gotham City Museum. Looks really great. You can see there's a charity reception happening. I love the columns. Also, all the bushes out here in the front. The stairs going up to the double doors. Looks great. I love the little gargoyles there as well on the corners. The little hot dog pieces as well being used for like the roundness part up here at the top of the museum. And you can remove the whole front. Here we've got the scarecrow and he looks awesome. Uh, and I think that this is of course meant to be fear toxin. You could see like some sort of device has gone off there and the fear toxins even going outside of the museum. And then over here we've got Rachel Ghoul who looks amazing. But specifically this, I, I'm not sure what that's meant to be. I think it's a sarcophagus sort of looking thing. Maybe this could be one of the brick built characters. Here's a little water tower. Cool design there for that. But this for the hospital is incredible. The design of this is just like the use of the parts to create the cross for the hospital bit is amazing. I love the windows as well. Obviously this is where two faces, spoilers a little bit, but you could see the white and the black through the windows look so cool. And removing this, you could see on the inside, you've got the checkered floor there for the hospital and then the doors look great, but this is awesome. Having the window in the back when like the lightning goes off and it reveals his scarred face for the first time. Like that's such a fun reference. Obviously he didn't have a Tommy gun at the time or wearing this outfit, but like that's perfect. Again, he started this whole journey for me. This building here, this is actually Catwoman's apartment from uh, the Red Claw episode. And this is just, I love the shaping of this and the angles that they've done. Like, look how it fits inside of the dark brown section. And then these pieces here in sand blue, it's awesome. Here's the diamond exchange building. And as you go on up, it just looks amazing. I love just the design of this with, again, those sand blue pieces throughout this. And then the back of that building too looks nice. And you've got this small blimp as well here. And here is the Laugh Palace. Laugh off tonight. And it just looks great. I love the windows. The, the way that this is a corner building here as well is just amazing how that wraps around and the, the way that this is angled too and built in. Like, it's just amazing. I am just so impressed by this. Anyways, you, of course, can detach and remove this whole chunk, revealing a couple things. First thing here is the Condiment King, and he's on stage and he's squirting ketchup and mustard. Amazing. And here we have the Clock King, Looks great. I love all the clocks in the back. You've got some gears there, a part of the clock tower, which is where we're in. And I got this wrong when I said in my reveal video that the clock faces said 315. It's not 315 yet. It is going to strike 315. And when it does, it's going to squish the mayor here, which is just really awesome how they have uh, these three stickers all on each side of the clock tower there and here if you remove this section and that gives us access to harley and ivy which is awesome and i love that they've got like a bag of crystals and diamonds and then there you've got another diamond with some vines i'm not sure what like the builds are specifically here obviously some plants you've got some other diamonds on display with this sort of checkered background in the back and then as well a little bit of red to the left I think this is maybe their hideout, but I'm not really too sure. But it's also inside the Diamond Exchange, so not too sure. And here is probably my favorite reference in the entire set. Um, it's this little poster of the Grey Ghost. And if you don't know <laughs> anything about this, it's actually played, the character is played by Adam West. And the idea is that instead of it being Zorro, like it's been in other, you know, adaptations, it's the Grey Ghost. And... He has inspired Bruce Wayne and Batman. And it was sort of this passing of the torch between Adam West and Kevin Conroy. And now the fact that we've lost both of them, it just, this little tile just means that much more. This section's actually super interesting. I love the giant Joker head there, the, the smile in behind there and the eyes and everything. The design of it being gray 
and all this, even the words Joker's amusement area, that's actually a very specific reference to Joker's Wild. It's actually inside of a casino, like this section, the Joker's amusement area. That's pretty crazy that we have that reference, but it's supposed to be sort of like an amusement mile section. So you've got like the fence here, you've got, uh, and it's, I guess it's closed, and then you've also got the double doors, but this Ferris wheel design is so cool. I love how they've got these little pieces for it spinning, but then those two silver candlesticks there to hold the whole thing up. We have Ace Chemicals, which looks great. Like it's this really huge factory in the back there. I love the smokestacks, the bananas in light gray acting as the smoke coming out of the different chimneys and everything looks great. But specifically the Joker in behind this bit here, which looks great for Ace Chemicals Co. And uh, that's a sticker. You could see there he is. And he's next to the railing, presumably that he fell into a vat of acid, <laughs> which is uh, a really Fun little reference to a number of different things, even the the man who killed Batman. So, I, which I just thoroughly love that whole monologue of today's the day the clown cried. Also, just want to point out, he's got a hairpiece there that isn't actually in the set. In behind here, we've got this really cool building. I love the arch there and the curves and everything. But then you've got a bunch of different black buildings and different bridges that I didn't talk about in behind all of these different sections there, like the building that Batman's on or all of these other ones that we did talk about because they're a little bit more up front. But yeah, there's just so many little hidden details in the back there that you just can't really see unless I specifically pointed out, you might not have noticed. And this is where you also get access to the other hole for attaching it to the wall. And here's the botanical gardens. I love just the curve here that you've got and it's coming around here to the front. I love the door and just the little vines coming out of the glass. It's broken out. I think that's cool. And just this angle using that window screen piece, all the different leaves. But this, all of it, uh, I guess I can specifically remove that section. You could see all the plants and different things inside. Also that flower color specifically is the new dark orange color for 2024. And inside here, we've actually got the sewer, which you've even got this giant hole that you could walk through or pretend I love the little ladder going on up. And I guess this could also act because it's also under Arkham that they can escape through the sewers here. I love the water. There's actually a lot of water there. Uh, like that's three studs deep where Killer Croc is and he's holding a giant rock which is just awesome to fight Bane who also looks great. But that rock just makes me think of a line from the show of Hit him with a rock. And then over there in the corner, we've got a rubber ducky there. Uh, that's for the penguin. And I love that pipe piece as well up above that. Here is Arkham Asylum. And you saw this a little bit before, but I love the sign. That looks great. That sticker on that curved piece and just how they've done like the gate. And again, you've got this road leading on up to Arkham like we had for Wayne Manor. And the building itself looks great with all the different windows for all of the different cells. And I just love the shaping of this, the color scheme and everything here. This would make an excellent set, I think. And then the last of the characters to look at here is of course right here. When you remove these two parts of Arkham, you get the cells, which is just insane. Like I love, first of all, how they're on the regular two by two tiles that you've seen all throughout this, but they're inside of the window pieces. So here, You've got Scarface and the Ventriloquist. You've got Baby Doll there, the Mad Hatter, Man Bat there hanging upside down in his cell. And that's just so cool, the fact that all four of them are referenced. We, we've never gotten here specifically uh, Scarface, the Ventriloquist, Baby Doll, and the Mad Hatter. Mad Hatter, we've been waiting since 2008. Uh, when it comes to Man Bat, he's the first like villain from the first episode, so that's awesome that they referenced him. But hiding over here is Lockup, which is insane. Another one like Baby Doll that I just never in a million years would have expected to be referenced here. That's just like that that's insane. Few more things here. You've got another GCPD blimp with the light shining on down. And then you've also got here the Batwing, which attaches to those two studs. It looks really great. Again, another example of a perfect set that we could get down the line. Love the shape and the design of this. In one of the other images, it had the bat wing over here. So you could really just attach it anywhere and just like attach it to the different parts of the dark red clouds. So you could have it flying around the city. 
And here's what it looks like with every little section removed. And this is all of the small little buildings and spots all out in the front here. Crazy how many spots there actually is hidden inside of this thing. I love the frame for this set, by the way. The black, the rounded pieces just look amazing. Like, just, it, it frames it so well, really just makes it pop. Also sort of feels like a comic book panel. Now here's the Batman logo from the animated series, and it looks amazing. The fact that this is all brick built and that they've captured like the font style is absolutely amazing using all these just different pieces. Now, I'm probably going to be hanging this on a white wall, which means that I might swap out all of the different tiles for black just because this is going to blend in. So I'd really want the word to pop. So that's going to be fun to do, I think. Maybe a separate video. And this is what it looks like here on the back. Uh, not the nicest looking, I'd say. You could see what I mean by having the Batman symbol in black, though. Like, I think that'll look nice. Anyways, yeah, you're not really going to look at it from the back, I'd say. So, yeah, it just... I, I really question, like, some of the placement of, like, some of the plates. Like, what was the thinking behind that? But, yeah, there is actually some stuff here in the back to make note of. Obviously, you've got uh, the two spots to hang it from the back here. But also, there's uh, these little feet that can be extended as well so that it won't actually tip over. So you can sort of lean this back and uh, the feet will catch it so that it won't tip over. Here's the brand new build for the gargoyle stand here for the minifigures. This is really cool. I love the new look with the ingots. Uh, the new gargoyle designs as well look pretty great there at two with the wings and uh, same little horns and different things. But yeah, this stand is awesome. When it comes to just getting minifigures in general, I think that's something some people are missing is the fact that you know, let's say if this was a Star Wars UCS set, do you know what would happen? We'd only get two characters. And that's it. Two characters in the stand and the plaque, right? That That's typical. Other sets like the Amazing Spider-Man art had no figures. So the fact that we are getting four figures in here is really great. Wanting, you know, 20, 30, you're, you're crazy. I, I don't know what you're thinking. I'm going to lock you up in Arkham thinking that way. We have to start with Batman. This is just... What what a figure. Like it's it's incredible. The the double sided cape here, the dark blue and the black is just so surreal to finally have. Like it looks great. Uh, I will say the torso is a little detailed for me personally. I think just uh, some of the prints there, but I love the belt, the shine there looks great. Even the bat symbol and a little bit of the cape up at the top. The legs are amazing too. They are actually dual molded and I love the printing there. Looks great. The cowl, I actually think works pretty well for Batman in the Animated Series here. And this is a new cowl from last year. And what's cool about it is it's actually dual molded. So you've got the white eyes there and on the inside, it's all white too. So it's blocking out the eyes. That way the face underneath doesn't have to have that ugly headband that we've been having since 2006. But uh, yeah, I really think that this face works fine for him, I guess. On the other side, he's got this angry expression. And turning around the cape, you could see the back torso printing there. It, it looks pretty cool. And here is Catwoman. Uh, just an FYI when it comes to all these figures, I believe she might be the only one that remains exclusive. Everyone else is rumored to be appearing in another set potentially in the summer. So just keep that in mind if you were rushing out to get it because of the other characters and you didn't really care for Catwoman. Uh, she's not on the list so far. But I still like the torso printing. I think that looks great. And just the shine on the belt is really cool. As well as coming around here to the back. Like that looks pretty cool too. And the muscles and everything. I think that this piece actually works well for her mask and everything. And the face printing. The smile. The smirk. And just how they've done the lighting looks good. Love the dual molded legs. That's pretty cool. But uh, yeah. The arms. A lot of people are upset by that. They definitely should have been dual molded as well. And you do have a black whip as well as a crystal here for her. And here is the Harley Quinn minifigure. She looks amazing. This is probably my favorite figure we've ever gotten of her. Maybe, again, it's the Batman the Animated Series bias here. But I love the printing here. Like, the feet printing, the leg printing with the diamonds. 
a little bit on the hip and even the silhouette printing there on the torso looks great i love the abs how they've done that there and coming around here onto the back just the uh the muscles on the shoulders look great now this gun is actually from a cover of the episode harley quinade from the the opening which looks great the face however it's not the greatest and that's sometimes what happens when you print on red but i love the smirk that we've got if it did look better i think that would just be perfect i love how they've done the printing there just uh again with the black how that's sort of off-centered looks amazing and then over here on the other side an even bigger smile and yeah just the printing quality on that is not the greatest i wonder if it's just mine or if it's just all of them in general but also really great to see the jester hat here back and here he is the clown prince of crime and he just oh my goodness just just amazing to have this figure like so strange and surreal like this has just been a dream of mine to have a batman the animated series joker here finally is just amazing i love the torso like it's so well printed. I love the bow tie color, the little flower pin. It's amazing. The only thing, late printing. Would have been awesome to have his shoes. His white tipped shoes would be great. But I really love the, the stick of dynamite as his accessory. You know, that's very fitting for the show. And then even the hairpiece, having it recolored here in dark green, I think works well. It's also just a fun little reference, I guess, to the 2012, you know, when DC superheroes came back. But I think it works well, honestly. And there's just something weird about having this in dark green. It almost doesn't feel real. I don't know how to describe it. But yeah, I really love this smile that he's got. And on the other side, he's got this smirk there too, or this upset expression. I just think they've captured him really, really well. I think maybe would have made the eyebrows or lack thereof a little bit thicker, sort of like what we saw in DC Supervillains. But still... I can't believe that my favorite Joker is here in minifigure form. Well, there you have it, everyone. That is my review of the Batman, the animated series, Gotham City set. Again, just, it's incredible. I think it is just such a love letter for fans of Batman, fans of Batman, the animated series, of course, specifically. And it just makes for such an excellent display piece. I cannot wait to hang this on my wall and just constantly look at it and smile because that's what I've been doing every time I walk past this and see this. And I cannot wait for you guys to get your hands on this. I cannot wait to see what the future of Lego and Batman the Animated Series have. I would just love, and I know so many other people would, if we get every single character referenced in here in minifigure form, that, that would just be such a dream come true. And I this is one tiny step closer in that direction. But anyways, everyone... Be sure to subscribe, turn on the bell notifications so you don't miss out on future Lego Batman set news and reviews. And we've got, again, all those other sets that we're going to be talking about later on in the summer and the year. So I'm so excited about that. But I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Hope you all have a great day. I'll see you all in the next one.